Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion. Please remind me of Isaac Plus. Myriad cursed runs in the past. I want an uncursed normal run. So far, so good. Sad Onion. Good rate of fire. Damage stat. Uh, and luck in particular is pretty bad. But damage stat will improve very slightly here. Speed stat goes up. This is the first time I've ever noticed in my entire life that the Wolf Tooth increases your speed. I guess the idea is that wolves are fast. And that is true. If I had to outrun a wolf, I would not give myself good odds. I would give myself like a 1% chance. The Here's where the 1% comes in, by the way. If me and a wolf are both chasing after the same piece of food, or I am the piece of food and the wolf's chasing after me, no chance. But if the wolf just happens to be running in the same direction as me and doesn't realize it's a race, then I have a chance. It could get distracted by any conceivable stimulus in the environment. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say I could outrun a wolf, but my superior gray matter neuronic bundle could give me a chance to outcompete it. Anyway. By the way, I recognize I'm hearing all the but without any bombs, there's no means for us to take advantage of that. Not really a wolf, more like a uh, like a Star Wars character. Not quite Chewbacca, it would be like another Wookiee. Something from the Christmas special, ideally. So, you know, like what is the name? I forget the name of the Wookiee family from the Star Wars Christmas special. If you've never seen it yourself, you have an obligation to. If for some reason you're under the impression that The Last Jedi is the worst uh, Star Wars property ever released, you have an obligation to watch the Star Wars Christmas special. And that's all I'm going to say about that, except I may talk about The Last Jedi for, I don't know, like the next 10 or 15 minutes. The thing with Isaac is... Do you ever find yourself on a tangent? I, I'll put it in like, you know, DAE terms for you. We start the run on a wow loop. And the wow loop is, let's talk about Isaac. And the catch that allows you to exit that wow loop is when you bring up something in the course of your natural flow of consciousness that you can spin off of to make for anecdotes and conversations. So we hit that catch with Star Wars The Last Jedi because I can't believe that movie came out in December of 2017. It is now June of 2018. Well, sorry, it's July. I've been, it's, it's actually like almost mid-July. I've been sick since June, so like... I think that's why in my brain I still think it's June. I haven't looked at the calendar too often, because it's summertime and the living is easy. I understand why, by the way. But I also don't understand why, because we're one full Star Wars film away from even... Star Wars The Last Jedi being the last film because they're trying to make Star Wars come out as often as Marvel films come out, which is, uh, well, you, you know, you gotta get some Russos on your side if you're gonna make that happen. But anyway, I'll go ahead and say it. I'm one of those guys who likes The Last Jedi a lot. I saw it in theaters. After the controversy about a dividing audience had started, I thought it was a pretty good and inventive Star Wars film. And I thought, you know, when January rolled around, that would be that, you know? That would be the end of the the conversation, the controversy. Because when I grew up, and you, you may argue that I haven't yet. Thank you for Mom's Knife. This run is conventional and excellent so far. Um, when I grew up, oftentimes, and this is where I, I, I kind of worry about the state of the modern world. Not really, because, like, I think things are... Well, I was going to say largely fine, but now I'm not sure if I believe that. But anyway, like, it's not like we're running the risk of dying, you know, as a society over the course of the next six months or something like that. We've got at least a couple of years at the worst case scenario, right? Um, when I was a kid, when I was a teenager even, sometimes beloved franchises would totally crap the bed. They would come out with a, a sequel, and it would be terrible. And you know what you did is you went, well... They really screwed it up, and then you just moved on with your life. Now, I believe this is probably, I don't if you dislike Star Wars The Last Jedi, I don't want to mischaracterize you as, you know, everybody who dislikes The Last Jedi 
being of the opinion that they need to finance that remake and you go, oh, Holdo has purple hair, blah, blah, blah. But this is a new world for me. I'll give you the perfect example, The Matrix. 1999, Matrix 1 comes out, very similar to Star Wars A New Hope, comes out of nowhere, surprises everybody, an inventive sci-fi movie. I'll take it, it's strange, but I'll take it. The likes of which the world had rarely seen before. Matrix 2 comes out, pretty terrible. Nobody, you know, some people will still go to bad for that movie, even I'll go to bad for the movie a little bit, but... You know, what did we do? Did we make a petition that said, hey Wachowskis, you need to remake The Matrix 2, you've ruined the franchise. No, we went, okay, we'll wait for The Matrix 3, and then The Matrix 3 came out, and in my opinion it was even worse. We just went, ah, we're writing off the franchise. I think Star Wars is a unique case, though, where people have been... And I've talked about this many times in the past. I consider myself... I am a fan of Star Wars. I would never self-identify as a Star Wars fan. I've never read any of the Thrawn novels. Don't take this as an insult if you are a fan of the, you know, former Extended Universe that J.J. Abrams wiped out! But, uh... You know, I, I like... I really like the first two Star Wars movies. I think Return of the Jedi is pretty bad. I don't like any of the prequels except the third one is okay. I thought The Force Awakens was good. Rogue One was better. Last Jedi I like better than all three, and I haven't seen Solo yet. But uh, it, it it's the franchise. And I'm willing, by the way, to be proven wrong in this. If you can think of a better example for the phenomenon that I'm about to say, please let me know what it is. But for right now, I'm willing to go to bat and say that Star Wars is the largest franchise with the worst average product quality. And I say this as somebody who has liked most of the, well, you know, maybe like 55% of the products that have come out from the franchise. The first two, I would even say the first three are worth being a fan of. The prequels are go undergoing a renaissance. But, I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty sure they're undergoing a renaissance because the people who watched them when they were too young to have a sharp critical eye are now becoming old enough to be tastemakers themselves. And as a result, uh, you know, those movies... When you're young, you watch things and you enjoy them, and uh, you bypass cynicism because you're a child, which is fine. And then when you get older, the things that you liked as a child, you have a tendency to still like because nostalgia is a great trickster and can also allow you to bypass cynicism. But anyway, I'm not saying, you know, you should like whatever you like. I'm just saying that Star Wars is like the largest franchise that has historically not really been that good. And I think that's why it's in this unique case with The Last Jedi. We don't need to go any further than that, though. There might be some in video games, I'll admit. As I know in movies, some people are probably like, what about Marvel movies? Dude. Go check with my friend Rotten Tomatoes, Rotten T, R. Tomatoes Esquire. Every Marvel movie, I think ever, maybe except for Iron Man 2 or 3, has been historically well liked. The prequels are a different story. You might say that, you know, that... They're guilty, I don't want to make this a Marvel thing. They're guilty of some things, playing it a little bit too safe. Every origin story is very similar. I'm just saying, okay? There's a reason that people like those movies, and that franchise has earned at least a chunk of its place in society. Star Wars, they had like six years, they released three landmark films. Took 20 years off, came back, released a bunch of stuff that nobody really liked and everybody cracked jokes of, Still the fandom survived. Now we're in the... I don't even know what you call it. The sequels era, I guess? You're not going to be able to call it the sequels era, I suppose, uh, once we finish with the third movie, but or the ninth movie, depending on your perspective, but... I don't know, man. Star Wars is just weird. I never thought I would live in a world where there were too many Star Wars movies. Because I grew up with Star Wars being like a cinematic event. It's like, you know, when episode one came out to theaters, uh, theaters, I was 10 years old. 
my parents were like, this is, I didn't ever think I would be able to see a Star Wars movie in theaters with my kids. And then, you know, you watch the movie and you go, the finger curls on the monkey's paw. But anyway, now it's like, there's so many Star Wars movies that you just, if you miss one, you're like, that's okay, I'll catch the one in three months. Things have changed. By the way, speaking of things changing, this run, it, I'll just say it, I'll call it like it is. It was not the right idea for us to take Ludovico technique. I am my own worst enemy from time to time in Isaac, and by from time to time, I mean like literally all time, oh, every time. Any run you got, you're gonna ruin it with Ludovico technique. Do, 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 do. That's a journey. It's called Music Sweet. Look it up. I don't know, man. Fandom is weird. It is and it isn't, right? Like, there's a, there's a crest to fandom. And I see it happening all... You can spot fandom generating a mile away. Here's like... I haven't really thought about the steps that I'm going to take with this here. So I might have to edit it on the fly. Thing comes out. And... I'm not going to say it always comes out of nowhere, but I'm just thinking of examples right now. Steven Universe, BoJack Horseman, Rick and Morty, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Undertale, you know. Things come out and spread by word of mouth because they're really good. People are like, man, have you heard of this game Undertale? Nobody knew what it was. It came out, it subverted the genre, and it's amazing. And I've played through Undertale. It's, a, it's actually a work of art. I genuinely believe that. Now, I have to cringe when I say that because of what follows in the steps of fandom. It spreads so much by word of mouth that people who fall in love with it and they unabashedly shoehorn it into almost every single conversation that they have for like the next six months and they make references like, Hoi, I'm Temmie, and you're like, Stop, please. You're making me want... It's the start of toxic fandom. And you can identify it in every single community that exists. You can identify it in the NLSS community. You know, that's why I always try to say, hey, don't spam my emotes in other chats because people are going to be irritated by it. I don't want like a purple lady situation is all I'm trying to say. I love my emotes and in corporate events, please God, spam it as often as possible because it's just hilarious to watch, you know, people try to, you know, whenever there's like something corporate happening on Twitch, Champions of Fire included, and you're, they're like trying to reconcile the very chaotic nature of Twitch culture with the fact that they have like corporate sponsors that they have to reconcile. It's, it's a beautiful... Shrek photo, I'm putting this in my cringe compilation, etc, etc. Anyway, you know, where was it with Undertale? Hoi, I'm Temmie. Where was it with uh, Bojack Horseman? Is this a crossover episode? You get the idea. Where was it with Rick and Morty? That's the most, like, recent prominent example that I can think of. It's, uh, I'm Pickle Rick. You know, you log on to Twitter one day and you see... 10,000 people go, Lel, I'm Pickle Rick, and you're like, oh no, this is where things have t jumped the shark a little bit. And I want to make a distinction, because you're going to be like, NL, these are good properties. I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying, you can spot the, the genesis of fandom a mile away. And, you know, there's positives and negatives. On the ascendancy, it's all positive. On the refractory, not so much. Anyway, we're heading down here. This run, still good, but dangerous. Please. Because Ludo, Mom's Knife, is not that good. Mom's Knife, by the way, uh, and, and Ludo did not ruin the Flat Rock synergy. That was ruined by Mom's Knife itself. Ludo is innocent, is what I'm trying to say. I do like Flat Rock. I'd be willing to try to make it work if we could pivot off of, <coughs> pardon me, mom's knife. You have to be careful on the internet, I'm just saying. 
I don't know what you do about fandom. Because, you know, for the most part, it's a good... The, the thing is, like, 90% of people that watch anything or engage in any kind of media are passive observers. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in a positive way. You know, they, they watch or listen and then they... No! Live their lives, and when their friends are like, Hey, which podcast do you want to watch? Or wh which podcast should I listen to, I should say? They go, Hey, have you heard of Last Podcast on the Left? It's a really cool podcast about, you know, true crime stories that I think I you might enjoy. And then there's some people who, for whatever reason, they take it upon themselves to be like guerrilla marketers for stuff and bring it up on every occasion. I don't know, I don't know what the distinction is. I've probably been that way myself when I was younger. But it almost, you know, it, it starts to make the fandom almost like... People don't want to associate it with it because instead of just experiencing a media property, now they have to co-opt as part of that fandom identity themselves. That's the take-home message, I guess. That's why it took so long, and it is my own foible, I'll admit. It took so long for me to play Undertale, I had such a hesitancy. Because if you played Undertale in the first week of its existence, that was bad luck. Um, if you played Undertale in the first week of its existence, you could play it because it looked like fun or you heard good things. If you played it from any point else in its existence onwards, you had to look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, am I okay becoming one of those Hoi Temi guys? And for a long time I wasn't, and then eventually I just sucked it up and said, you know what? I'm being petty about this situation. I'll play it, and I'm glad I did, because it was, uh, like, actually a great game. Anyway, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of spinning my wheels in the conversation. I hope I'm not generating offense here. That's not my intention. I'm just saying the internet has changed things, you know? Back in the day, I really feel like, uh... You know, Undertale would have been one of those games, instead of selling 2 million copies, would have sold like 20,000. It would have been passed around at flea markets and swap meets. People would come around, pick up the Undertale cartridge and be like, what do you think of this game? i never heard of it. You'd be like, it's amazing. And then they would play it and it would be something really special. But instead, in the modern era, you couldn't escape it. There's rule 34 everywhere. Dude, I actually regret the mom's knife pickup here. Couldn't shake a stick without seeing two skeletons have an intercourse and Temi watch her from the sidelines. Now, it's probably better this way, especially for the creator. They made a great piece of work that got spread around like crazy. It's beloved, and, you know, the fandom doesn't necessarily take away from the quality of the work. I'm just saying it's a new era. And somehow this ties back into Star Wars in ways that I haven't considered yet. We don't have movie pass in Canada, by the way. I still want it. I would go to the movies once a week if we had movie pass. What is movie pass? It's, well, I mean, movie pass might not exist in America by the time this video comes out. Even though I have almost no backlog, as I understand it, the company's in a little bit of trouble. They're doing surge pricing for movies, which is just emblematic of, like, our current technology and business culture. Everything is like, you know, an idea applied to a new business. Like, Uber invented surge pricing, as far as I know, in the in the current tech sphere. Surge pricing is basically like the logical endpoint of supply and demand. Uh, it's... <coughs> pardon me. It's New Year's Eve. Lots of people are drunk and want to get home. We're going to charge 40% more for our ride, because there's a lot of demand right now. I'm not actually against it, I'm just saying, like, you know, without being needlessly cynical, that is kind of, like, the exact purpose of it. So, Movie Pass is like, it's like Uber for movies. It's Tinder for dogs. It's like, uh, DoorDash for weed. You know, every, I feel like every startup idea from Silicon Valley is like that now. We're gonna create a great disruption in the grilled cheese industry. You're like, really? That's what... All right, I suppose. What's your business? Well, it's an app. Oh, okay, never mind. I'm not in a position to invest anyway. But, you know, if I were... It's not really my style. I'm not anti-Silicon Valley, by the way. Can you please frig off? 
it would be hypocritical for me. First off, I essentially work for two uh, California tech companies. I'm also in school for software development. So, like, I'm not going to betray my own. I'm just saying there's a lot of startup ideas out there that irritate me. The one that's gotten me now, and you know why they irritate me? is because I cannot tell if they're going to succeed or fail. In our modern business climate, I have no idea whether an idea is stupid or genius until I see it declare bankruptcy or get sold for $10 billion. No, 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 no. That's one of the few items I will never take, even for Zane purposes. Although I should have picked it up there. Oh, we can still do it like this. Like the new one is like, so you, you're probably familiar with Airbnb. Airbnb is like, hey, well, I'll, I'll give you the, the long and the short of it. The short of it is that it's basically like, why would you stay in a hotel for $500 a night when what we can do instead is, uh, you know, you when you're away, you can rent out your own apartment for other people to stay in for cheaper. And it's nice because it's larger than a hotel. You know, it might not be in the best location, but it might be. Airbnb is essentially, instead of buying a hotel room or renting a hotel room, you rent somebody else's place to stay in that is a local to the city. We use Airbnb all the time. I love it. Simultaneously, it's also contributing to the destruction of the rental market in major cities because what people are doing is instead of, uh, you know, renting out their own apartment when they go away for a week as a way to, you know, basically subsidize the cost of them going on a trip themselves, is they're buying up many, many apartments in these cities. We're not going to be able to do boss rush, by the way. This run now kind of sucks, and I'm a little cheesed off. But I rerolled it, so, you know, who, who's uh, laughing? You're laughing, hopefully. Instead of uh, just renting out their own apartment, you know, that they've gotten through normal means, people are buying, like, 20 apartments and then running them as pseudo-legal hotels. Now, the same thing that exists for Airbnb now exists uh, and, and is slowly spreading out throughout North America, but for cars. So it's like, hey, why are you paying for a car, you dummy, when you only drive maybe an hour a day at, at, at the average? That's probably roughly average. The other 23 hours, your car's just sitting in your parking lot doing nothing, being a layabout, not having a job. So what we're going to do is allow you to put your car on the open market to be rented out hour by hour for other people who don't have a car to do their own bidding. This is one of those ideas where I haven't yet figured out, is this terrible or is this awesome? Because I'll level with you. I think if you had told me about Uber in like 2008, I would have been like, this is kind of a bad idea. And there are people still to this day who think Uber is a bad idea, and that's fine. It's very obvious to come up with the reasons why Uber could be bad. Here's one, you know, what if the person that picks you up is a horrible driver? What if they're a serial killer, you know? The only counter argument I have to give you is that in Vancouver we don't have any ride sharing apps, so we use taxis to get to the airport and occasionally to get around, but like as infrequently as possible. Every time I'm in a taxi, I already feel like I'm gonna die. Taxi drivers routinely talking on their phones, aggressively cutting in and out of lanes to try to save, you know, two seconds. So, you know, if I'm going to die, I'd rather die with a cheaper fare, is what it comes down to. But this is a more contentious issue. Now, I'm of the opinion, I like Uber. I'll go ahead and say, if, if for some reason that strikes you as a political decision and you can no longer in good conscience support my videos, by all means. I didn't choose that hill to die on, you did. However, this micro car rental service, here's what my thinking, I don't want anybody else driving my car because I don't want to erode its resale value. Who knows, you know, the person driving it could be a terrible driver. I'm not even thinking of a joyride situation. I'm just thinking, in particular, I don't want to micro-rent my car out to uh, infrequent drivers, because an infrequent driver is probably more likely to be inexperienced and thus find themselves getting into accidents, minor scuffs, stuff like that. I don't want to deal with the enforcement aspect of, like, six people rented out my car today. Now it's got four scratches on it. Who did it, you know? 
Oh, I didn't do it. Oh, they must have been the last guy. Oh, no, I didn't do it. Those were there when I got here, you know? Just think maybe we've gone too far. Mind you, I shouldn't be too worried about the resale value of our car. Ford Canada has done a decent job of eroding that themselves with their um, willful ignorance of the class action lawsuit regarding the electronic transmission issues that plagued uh, five years of their vehicles. Yeah, I'm going to keep mentioning it. Absolutely. You know why I'm going to keep mentioning it? It's the way the system works. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. I tweeted you, Ford. If you got a problem with it, you can meet me there. If anybody out here watching this video works for Ford Canada, shoot me an email, shoot me a DM on Twitter, try to get the situation sorted. I'm not fighting the good fight for my fellow man. I'm fighting the good, uh, the good fight for myself and my wife. If you want to shut me up, it'll cost you roughly... One new Ford Focus. That's it. I understand that's expensive. I'm probably not doing as much damage to your business as that. I'm just saying that's my asking price. Until then, you know, I'm comfortable enough that I get a decent amount of satisfaction just bringing this up in videos on the regular. So, you know, you know where to speak with me is all I'm trying to say. Sometimes, I don't know, it, people, they have like a... Um, a fondness for certain automobile manufacturers. I'm not really a car guy, so I don't understand it. But I do find it hilarious when I bring up the Ford stuff. Sometimes I'll get people that are Ford fans, and they'll send me messages like, Leave Ford alone, dude. You don't understand, okay? Just because you got it. I'm driving the car. You understand? the? This is mansplaining. I'm being mansplained my own automobile issues. This company willfully shipped a, a faulty product, and I'm a victim of it, but because you like their logo or your dad drove a Ford Ranger when you were seven years old and you got fond memories, you're trying to hold me responsible as the victim. I don't think so, buddy. I don't think so. Anyway. Fandom, dude. It's a wild thing. That's the theme of the video, I guess. I mean, to be fair, by the way, I use Airbnb all the time. I would, for the same reasons, I would never rent out my car on a, you know, person-by-person -person basis. I would never, or an hour-by-hour -hour basis even, I would never rent out my apartment on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. Are you crazy? I, first off, I don't want to run a hotel. You know, it, my exit strategy for YouTube does not exist in the sense that people are like, you know, hey, you should, like buy a couple houses and start doing rental properties. Are you crazy? I don't want to be like a real estate or property management guy. Right now I play video games on YouTube, crack jokes and have ignorant opinions that I'm largely not held accountable for and I get paid for it. It's a dream come true. It's like the perfect job. Wow, that's an extreme bummer. Hey, you should invest some of your earnings and buy a subway. Are you crazy? I don't want to be a restaurant owner. I understand it's considered a relatively safe investment, but I just, you know, that's not where I want to be in my life. I don't want to own a subway. I want to play The Binding of Isaac, and un until that becomes untenable, we're doing all right right now. How did this run get so off the rails, dude? Well, the reroll, but also Ludo. Hey, careful. I'm willing to take a stab at it. Come on, come on, come on. I can't believe this is only the womb one, by the way. I think we take a stab at this one, too. I think we go a little... A little crazy. Like, I don't want to... Be involved in Airbnb. I use it all the time. Because it does tend to be cheaper than hotels. And for the price of a hotel in a major city... You know, you can actually get yourself, like, a nice apartment in a great location. You could have multiple people stay with you to offset the cost because there's multiple bedrooms. It's a great deal. But I would never rent out my own apartment. You know why? People that use Airbnb, at least a, a large subset of them, are coming to town for an event. What do people at an event do? They party. I don't, you're basically renting out your house as a party spot, and most people will probably treat your property with respect, but you're going to spend a lot of time cleaning, 
and a lot of time worried about damages, I'm sure. Hey, hey. I don't have the damage necessary to sustain this fight. Please. Please, please! Ugh. Bob's brain is my best damage dealer. I beg you. Oh my god, we gotta deal with the devil. Save me. I will take it. I think it's at least decent enough. I don't know if something switched in my brain for Isaac, or the game's undergoing like a new set of parameters. But dude, like... I don't know. We, we've had so many runs recently where I get down here and I'm just like, we have no killing power. How does this keep happening? Sweet health down. You might think I'm being facetious. I'm not, because we can actually use that as a health up if we're lucky enough to get a deal with the devil here, which is unlikely, but, you know, plausible. Dude, did you guys see the trailer for The Culling 2? It'll be out by the time this video goes live. I never do this. I'm a very, I'm, I beat the drum for responsibility in the games industry all the time. I think a lot of YouTubers, very willy-nilly in their criticism, they forget that games, you know, the, the ecosystem was not created by us. You know, we exist because other talented professionals and I'm not saying YouTubers are not talented. I will say I'm not talented, but I will never throw that shade at other YouTubers. Please. You know, other talented professionals are making products that we can then use to make transformative work on top of, you know? That being said, dude, I saw the trailer for The Culling 2 today. I liked The Culling 1 until they ruined it. The Culling 2 looks so horrendous. It's the most naked cash grab I've ever seen in my entire life. How is it possible that you could screw up your... Like, the culling was a battle royale before battle royales really hit even close to the ascendancy of their popularity. And yet, simultaneously, the culling is like... You know, they were there before anyone else was, more or less. And also, they're chasing the trend. It's so embarrassing. I'll play it. I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't just look like garbage. It looks like the most guaranteed garbage. It's like their trailer is a video of garbage. And then I'm going, it's trash. But I need to wait until I actually smell it to know if it's really garbage. Because it could just look like garbage. I mean, it's sitting there in a black bag in a silver can. And there's a big old truck that's coming over to try to, like, pick it up. But I can't responsibly say that it is garbage yet, because I haven't sniffed it for myself. I'll probably play it, maybe even like tomorrow when it comes out, but... I'm like embarrassed secondhand for the company. It's like an oh honey situation, you know? How does this happen? It's a great cautionary tale. I'll take it. Obviously. Ah, uh, this is very frightening. It, how did Bob's brain miss? You know how it missed? I shot all the other enemies out of the way. That was a perfect, cowardly evacuation. Okay, just this guy first. Beautiful. I'm hoping, like, death's list. I got the highest of high hopes for this item. Rarely does it end up Rarely do we work together conducively in a way to make sure those high hopes come to fruition, but I always do at least attempt or intend to give it the old college try. I've heard fairy tales, you know, about people that have used Death's List to get like eight damage ups on a single run. We have 5.24 damage on the womb. So, to, to raise our damage, you know, even two or three would be incredible. Oh my god, it worked. Uh, uh... Okay, well you should take this. And then I guess you would take Maw of the Void. Use your health upgrade. 
and then take Judas' Shadow. And I don't really care about making Judas' Shadow actually work. That was just an amazingly lucky deal with the devil. Like, a multi-dimensional baby, who cares? But Ma of the Void is insanely valuable. Like, even that situation. We screwed up. Broke even. Better than broke even. Because we, we got a charge on uh, Satanic Bible. Plus, if we die, we come back as Judas' Shadow. So... I'm in love with this situation right now. We should have a win. I do think there's a, a little bit of a case for me complaining here. Just, again, maybe I did it to myself, and that's what really hurts. But simultaneously, you know, I'm, a, I'm the kind of guy takes every item that shows up on a run, okay? Most of the time. I didn't take Isaac's heart, I'll admit. When taking every item leads to a situation in which you have a run that is so... Eh, that's where I find myself just mildly perturbed. Not like actually... Something's wrong with Isaac and it's gotta change, Ryan Johnson. I'm sorry, I don't mean to... Again, I want to draw a distinction. If you don't like The Last Jedi, that's fine. I don't care. It's not that I don't care, because that sounds dismissive. It's more like you have the right to feel however you feel about any media property, right? And I, I think it is is crappy for people who dislike The Last Jedi that they're being uh, vilified by association with the sorts of people who don't understand that like it's okay for a movie to just be bad and then like wait two years and the new one will come out anyway. Stop this. Like, you should be able to just dislike that movie, and that's, you know... I'm just letting you know I support your... your God-given constitutional right to not like that film. That being said, the punchline is not directed at you. It's directed at the people that are like, we need to remake this movie because it's done irreparable damage to the franchise. It's a piece of media, my friend. You need to get rid of touch with reality. We'll work on that song a little bit. Speaking of songs, I've had uh, Karma Chameleon stuck in my head for like 72 hours now. I didn't mention it in yesterday's videos because I didn't want people to get alarmed, but now I'm at the point where like I just can't ignore it anymore. You know what's ironic is that I really wish it comes and goes, but it, it doesn't. It just sort of is like, come on, come on, come on. And the other thing is I don't even know half of the lyrics. So all I have in my head is, I'm a man of something, something. Come a, come a, come a, come a, come a chameleon. It comes and goes. And then there's like, wah, 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 you know. And then it just repeats like that same eight bar refrain over and over. Homemade remix. Okay, please, Lord. Just like two great items. I know it's a big ask, but like. Is it, though? That's insanely great. Okay, so we got a three damage upgrade. Mom's Wig is also good. And then Scorpio for Poison Tears. And I'm going to be honest, I actually really like Crack the Sky. I'm taking it over Satanic Bible. I will take Satanic Bible uh, if we have to, because it's also a great item. The main way I would prefer to use Satanic Bible in this situation is to... Give us HP if we die and have to respawn via Judas' Shadow, which I would be completely okay with. Vast majority of the damage that I'm taking here is self-inflicted. You know, I'm getting too close to enemies in an attempt to make Maw of the Void work. But I, I kind of feel like uh, th that's not an accident. Like, th this aggression, in my opinion, is warranted until we see... Ooh, let's go. Until we see... If we're gonna respawn. If we're gonna respawn, then being aggressive is fine. And we can uh, play more conservatively slightly later. You son of a gun. Thank you. What? That shot still existed, huh? That one is actually highly my bad. This is good. It's good. 
Don't think this is bad. This is a great situation. Now we should go back, but I'm also kind of like, with 20 damage, we're so unbelievably set. As long as this room's not horrible. And it's like 30% horrible. This room is relatively dangerous by our standards in the game so far. But we should be totally fine here. One demon heart would have been nice, but so be it. Alright, one beam hit. That's all we could have asked for. So we just actually can't lose now because it would be embarrassing. We had many opportunities to pull out the dub. You're going to lose a lot of viewer support if you end up losing on a run like this. It'll be like that episode of Slay the Spire where you deliberately took the upgrade that made it so you can no longer heal and then you dropped to 1 HP and played a curse and killed yourself on a run to rank terribly on the daily. Look at that, we pulled out the W just barely, but hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did click the like button, it helps a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.